How you doing? I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this tutorial, I want to show you one of the most important and unique features in Reaper, known as mouse modifiers. One of the things that makes Reaper an amazing DAW is the fact that it's so easily customizable. And where that power really shines is with mouse modifiers. Because with them, we can adjust exactly how our mouse behaves in every possible situation. It becomes the way we interact with the program. So we can and should customize it to work the way we want to work, not the other way around. And as we go through this, you'll see that the hardest part is really choosing how we want to work. Because there's so many choices, the options can seem a bit overwhelming. But don't worry, we'll go over most of it so you can see what's possible and choose for yourself. And maybe even choose different mouse modifier setups, depending on what type of material you're working on at the time. It's all possible. So let's dig in. To open the mouse modifiers, We'll go to the Options menu, go to our Preferences, and scroll down to Editing Behavior, and choose Mouse Modifiers. This is the Mouse Modifiers Preferences. Over here is our Context. Basically, the context is what we're clicking on. So if we choose Media Item, this is what's going to happen when we choose a Media Item. If we just click it, or if we choose track, what's going to happen when we click on our track? Or if we choose ruler, what's going to happen when we click the ruler? That's the context. Then over here, there's a few other options. Let's go back to media item. There's left click, left drag, and double click. This is going to change depending on what we choose. So media item has three options, but envelope lane only has one. So each context is going to be different. So down here is what's going to happen. Let's go back to media item again. The first option is default action. This is what's going to happen when we left click on a media item. In this case, it's going to select the item and move the edit cursor. So if we click right here, it selects the item and moves the edit cursor. If we choose track, the default action is to deselect all items and move the edit cursor. So click on our track, it deselects the items, but moves our cursor. So those are the default actions. But below that are the things that are gonna take place while holding down modifiers, like Shift, Command. Now I'm on a Mac, so we have things like Command and Option. On the PC, you'll see Control, Alt, or Start, instead of Command, Option, or Control. But it works the same way. And you can combine them to create many more, like Shift and Control, Command and Control. Now you notice some of these are blank because they're not defined yet, but we can very easily define them right here. Just double click them and choose a behavior to go with that modifier. Let's choose extend time selection, ignoring snap. So now if we left click while holding down the modifier control on PC, it'll be start. It's going to extend the time selection, but ignore snap. So snapping is turned on over here. Let's make a time selection. See how it's extending by snap? If we want to extend it further out to here, hold down Control and click it, it extends it right there, ignoring the snap. Whereas if we hold Shift instead, it's going to extend the time selection, but it's not going to ignore the snap. Hold down Shift, click over here and it extends the time selection to the nearest grid line, so it doesn't ignore the snap. Another thing I should mention, on the context, a quick way to choose which context we're going to edit can be done right here. If I choose a media item, then open it up, it goes to media item. If I click in the track and open it up, it goes to track. Click in the ruler, same thing, 
it jumps right to the ruler. So it's a quick way of getting right to the mouse modifier we want to edit. And I should also mention, on Mac, there's an option here to swap command and option. Let's go back to media item. And if we choose this, the command and option behaviors swap. Click it again, and they go back. Just a quick way of swapping them, although you can do it manually just by changing them here. Over here, we could import and export our mouse modifiers. So we could save the modifiers just for this context, media item. We could save the modifiers for all our contexts. We could load them just for this context, or for all of them, or reset them to factory default just for this context, or for all the contexts over here. So by clicking this, we reset all our mouse modifiers back to the factory setting for all the contexts. So by using this menu right here, we could set up different mouse modifiers depending on the type of project that we're working on. We could set up one for dialogue, one for music, one for film editing or post, and just change them right from this menu, and the mouse modifiers will change to that behavior. And I should also mention the menu in each one of these, default, shift, command, they're exactly the same. So this menu here is the same as this one here, or this one here. We're just going to choose different ones for different modifiers, but the menu is the same, although it's different for each context. So this menu is a little bit different. But within each context, each one of these modifiers is the same. And also down here, there's a little button that gives us even more options. And this also changes based on the context. So the media item has a different one from the envelope lane. But we'll get to that in a bit. Now to keep these videos organized, I'm gonna break this up into many parts based on the different contexts. So in the next video, we're gonna go over the media item contexts. We'll go through each one, checking out the options and how they work. And in the videos to follow, we'll go through the rest of them, showing you the default behavior and what the options are. So let's check out the media item mouse modifiers in the next video. Let's go.